somebody that he had a mental weakness. Um, I knew the guys that he was connected with was a very sort of mental illness. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel United Church of Christ on this first Sunday in Lent. A season of preparation for Easter, that season of repentance, of meditation, of prayer. We thank you, thank you for being here uh, this morning. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. We have gathered in the presence of God our Creator, who sets before us the ways of life and death. We have gathered in the presence of Jesus the Christ, who calls us to accept the cost of discipleship, that we may know its joy. We have gathered in the presence of the Spirit, who sustains us in trial and rejoicing. In our living and in our dying, we belong to God. In the shadow of God's wings, we sing for joy. Let us worship God. All of our hymns are in the red hymnal, the e r hymnal. The, our first is number 143. Forty days and forty nights Thou wast fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet undefiled Shall we not thy sorrow share And from earthly joys abstain Fasting with unceasing prayer, glad with thee to suffer pain. And with Satan vexing sore, flesh or spirit should assail, thou his vanquisher before, grant we may not faint nor fail. Keep, O oh, keep us, Savior dear, ever constant by thy side, that with thee we may appear at the eternal Easter tide. Our service this morning, we will be using portions of the old evangelical and reform preparatory service. Uh, back in the day, this was the service we used on the Sunday before communion. Uh, there's a uh, desire, uh, there was a need for uh, repentance, uh, for, for repentance and confession of sin and preparation for communion. Um, we've been using it once a year uh, on the first Sunday in Lent to, to uh, put us in the mindset uh, for, the, for, for the Lenten season. We, we're on page, uh, so we'll be flipping back and forth between this and the regular service. We're on page 14 in the front of the red hymnal. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Amen. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments." Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, 
nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep all these laws. Hear also what the Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Let us pray. O Lord God, who dips at the first, deliver thy commandments from the mount which burned with fire, amid blackness and darkness and tempest. We thank thee that this same law is now published unto us from Mount Zion through the mediator of a new and better covenant. And we humbly beseech thee to put these words into our minds and write them in our hearts that we may delight in thy law after the inward man and serve thee in newness of spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant his forgiveness. And we'll use the confession as printed in the bulletin. We confess, gracious God, that at times we reject your love for us. You lead us out of the land of slavery, Yet, when the journey is hard, we long to return to the comfort of our chains. Your prophets tell us how our rebellion hurts and angers you, yet we harden our hearts and close our ears. You come to us in Jesus, revealing your love for all people and suffering pain for us, yet we do not turn in love, in obedience to you. Speak the word, O God, and we shall be made free. Forgive us, receive us and give us courage to serve you with renewed hearts and wills through the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. On us. Hearken now under the comforting assurance of the grace of God, promised in the gospel to all that repent and believe. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Unto as many of us, therefore, beloved sisters and brothers, as truly repent of our sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ with full purpose of new obedience, I announce and declare by the authority and in the name of Christ that our sins are forgiven according to his promise in the gospel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. 
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, the second chapter, verses 15 to 17, and then the third chapter, the first seven verses. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat it from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You shall not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 32. It's found in the bulletin insert. We will read responsively. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with a bit and bridle, or else it will not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright of heart. Our first New Testament reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, the fifth chapter, verses 12 through 19. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin was not reckoned when there was no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgressions of Adam, who is a type for the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, how much more surely has the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many? And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment follows one trespass, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses, brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness This leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. And finally, our gospel this morning, uh, Matthew chapter 4, the first 11 verses. 
And this, in, 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 in sequence, in Matthew's gospel, this comes immediately after Jesus' baptism in the Jordan by, by John the Baptist. So Jesus was baptized. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him in the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Here end our scriptures for this morning. May God bless to our hearing the reading of God's holy word. Uh, may we say what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 6 in the front of the red hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 160 in the red hymnal, number 160. In the hour of trial, Jesus plead for me, lest by base denial I depart from thee. When thou seest me waver with a look recall, nor for fear or favor suffer me to fall. With forbidden pleasures would this vain world charm, or its sordid treasures spread to work me harm. Bring me my remembrance, said Gethsemane, or in dark assemblance, cross crown Calvary. Should thy mercy send me sorrow, toil, or woe, or should pain attend me on my path below, grant that I may never fail thy hand to and that I may ever cast my care on Thee. We come to our time of prayer. We'll be turning to the litany on page 15 in the front of the red hymnal. But before we begin in the litany, uh, we name our prayer requests. Of course, we want to keep in prayer, in, in, in special prayer, uh, Susan uh, Nowak uh, received some uh, very bad medical news this week. Uh, she, uh, she, she, uh, her uh, liver has failed, and uh, she, she's not, she's not expected to. Uh, she's not. She, they think she doesn't have much time left. So, 
please, I, I went to visit Susan on Friday. Um, she was in good spirits, very good spirits, all things considered. Uh, she's at peace. Her faith is sustaining her. Um, Susan's a real, a real uh, testament to to the uh, to the power of faith, uh, even e even in the, the the most difficult of times. So please, uh, we we keep Susan in prayer. Also, there's a there's a card on the table. Um, would ask uh, everyone if you feel led to uh, to sign it. Uh, leave a, a brief message for. Uh, for, for Susan, let her know. Let, let Susan know that her church is, is is praying with her and standing with her, even even in this, this most difficult of times. Um, want to continue to keep in prayer, uh, Alan, uh, for healing of his of his shoulder uh, and and, and uh, recover from cataract surgery. Um, Frank for his balance. His balance. Um, other requests. Uh, Helen. I just prayed in Las Vegas, who's elderly and is going through some terrible times right now. And he's hospitalized. He has leukemia. And she needs our prayers. And her name is? Zena Anchor. Zena Anchor. And she was concerned about ordering up in a Protestant church because she's Jewish. <laughs> God, God will hear our prayers. <laughs> Hers and ours. Other requests, Alan. My niece Dawn, uh, she had surgery, but they found more cancer in the lymph node, so she's going through chemo right now. Uh, Dawn Morrow. Yes. Um, other, uh, uh, Mark. Gianna. First for Gianna, yes. Yeah, pray for Vince too. Vince, my husband. Vince, yes. Sorry, little. I. Vince. <laughs> he got everything. Get cancer. Pray for Vince. Yeah, pray for Vince. Pray for Vince. Pray for Vince. We will pray. We will pray for Vincent. Other other requests. So we will begin with the litany, and then and then I'll end with and then I'll end with a with, with a a prayer lifting up our concerns. Uh, on page 15, starting in about the middle. O God, the Father in heaven, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, the Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, ever one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people people whom thou hast redeemed with my, thy most precious blood. Spare us, good Lord, from all blindness of heart, from pride, vain glory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and all uncharitableness. Good Lord, deliver us from all impure lusts and desires, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from lightning and tempest from fire and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine, from all disasters by land, by air, and by water, from battle and murder and from violent death, good Lord, deliver us, from sedition and rebellion, from heresy and schism, from hardness of heart and contempt of thy word and authority, good Lord, deliver us, by the, by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity, by thy baptism, temptation, and ministry, good Lord, deliver us, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of thy Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our wealth, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord God, and that it may please thee to govern and direct thy holy church universal. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, the Governor of this Commonwealth, and all others in authority, that law and order may everywhere prevail. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless the rulers of all lands, giving them grace to execute justice and to maintain truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to bless and protect all who serve mankind by labor, industry, and learning. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, 
that it may please thee to give to all nations unity, peace, and concord. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to keep us in all time of temptation and heaviness, to comfort and help all the weak-hearted, to raise up them that fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to suck to succor, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to preserve all women in the perils of childbirth, all sick persons and young children, and to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to defend and pro provide for the fatherless children, the widows, and all that are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to have mercy upon all, man, all humankind, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. O Son of God, Redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord, we pray for those whose names we have lifted up. Lord, we pray that you will be with our sister Susan in a special way during this very fragile time. We Thank you for her lifelong faithfulness to you and to this congregation. We give you thanks for that her faith is sustaining her even, even in this fragile time. We pray for the doctors and nurses and all who are attending to her health and her needs. We pray for Susan's family. We pray for... Dorothy and Nancy, uh, we, we pray that you will be, that you will strengthen and support Dorothy and Nancy and all, and, 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 and all, the, and all the members of Susan's family. Uh, we pray for continued healing for Alan's shoulder and, for, uh, and from cataract surgery. We pray for Frank, that you may help him with his balance, that you would strengthen him. And, and stabilize him and, and, and uphold him. We pray for Don, for Don Morrow that you may walk beside her in this journey of, chem of chemotherapy and, and treatment for cancer. We pray that you would lay your healing hand on her uh, for you are the great physician and that you would be with all who are caring for her. We pray that you would be with Z Zena Anker, uh, diagnosed with leukemia. Just, we pray that you would lay your healing hand on her, that you would surround Zena with your love, that she, may, that she may know and feel your presence in this fragile time. We pray also for Vincent. Uh, we pray that you would gr grant him strength of body, peace of mind, and joy of spirit. We Pray that you would strengthen Vincent and, and, and grant him health and grant him peace. We pray for all who are going through time of transition, for the homeless, that you would provide for their needs and protect them, for the veterans, that you would heal the wounds of war. We pray for Gianna, for your, your guidance and support. Uh, be, be, be with Gianna, guide her steps and guard her paths. We pray for Isaac and his family and Dee and her family. We pray for all the churches in Bridesburg, especially those of the Bridesburg Council, as we seek to share your love and meet the needs of your people. And we pray for this congregation, Emmanuel United Church of Christ. Sustain us, encourage us, enable us to be a sign of your presence. May all that we say and do here be to your glory. O God, merciful Father, who despises not the sighing of the contrite, nor reject us the desires of the sorrowful. Be favorable to our prayers, which in our afflictions that continually oppress us, we pour out before thee, and graciously hear them, that those things which the craft of the devil or of man worketh against us may be brought to naught, and by the counsel of thy goodness be dispersed, so that, being hurt by no persecutions, we may evermore give thanks to thee in thy holy church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, nor take away, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may by thy protection pass our ta time in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
we come to our time of announcements. Uh, we will be, uh, Emmanuel Church will be hosting the Wednesday night uh, Latin service here, uh, 7 p.m. Um, at, the, at, at Ash Wednesday, they had, uh, they offered, uh, they had offered co coffee and dessert, basically, so if we, you know, if we could, we, if we could, if we could follow suit, um, the, it'll be starting at six o'clock. That'll be starting at six, and then the service is still. Hmm? Where's the steak dinner? <laughs> Surf and turf. Yeah. We'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll have a we'll have a cake shaped like a fish and a cake <laughs> shaped like. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Uh, and then the service will start at will will start at seven. I have to say it was it was wonderful. To, we we were at uh, Bethesda. Uh, we, it's a, I think that's the first time we've celebrated Ash Wednesday at Bethesda yes, yes. in many many a long year. Uh, it was great to see the other pastors and congregations. Uh, we you know COVID precautions had kind of cramped our style, so it was it was it was good to be together uh, in one place. It, it truly was. Let us give, not grudgingly or under compulsion, but with joy, for Lord loves a cheerful giver. come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Receive, Lord, these are tithes and offerings we pray we would use them to spread your good news of salvation and to build your kingdom on earth. This we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, one other announcement I forgot. There are still Lenten devotional booklets on the on the back table or where, in front of Johnny if any if anybody wants to, to take one. Our next hymn, number 158 in the red hymnal, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. 158. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me I sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did there such love and sorrow thorns compose so rich a crown were the whole realm of nature mine that were a present far too small love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life 
my all. And let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Here we are again. Welcome to Lent, the 40-day season of self-examination, meditation, and repentance leading up to the events of Holy Week and Easter. Lent began, of course, with Ash Wednesday, with the reminder that, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return, and the command to repent and believe in the gospel. And as I said earlier, uh, after two years of COVID precautions, of separation and online Lenten service, it was a joy, even as we began Lent, even in remembering mortality and even in repentance, to gather with the pastors and congregations of the other two churches of the Bridesburg Council, Bridesburg Methodist and, and, and Bethesda Methodist, to begin Lent together, drawing strength from one another as we begin together our Lenten journey through the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Ash Wednesday, remember that you are dust and repent and believe the gospel. These two statements set the tone for Lent as a time of remembrance and of repentance. We are reminded that at every moment we depend on God for breath and for life itself, that tomorrow is promised to none of us. Today's scriptures all focus on temptation and sin. Our reading from Genesis puts us back in the Garden of Eden at the, at, at the moment when Adam and Eve gave in to temptation and sin entered the world. I think it's worth noting that our gospel reading is set not in a garden, but in the desert. After Adam and Eve had sinned, among other things, God told them that because of their actions, the ground itself was cursed. And that is what sin does in our lives as well, promising a garden of earthly delights, perhaps offering momentary pleasure or at least relief or distraction from pain, but ultimately turning our lives into a desert, sterile, barren, lifeless. We remember that Israel's way to the promised land was through 40 years in the wilderness and that the people often rebelled against their leader, Moses, and all ultimately against God. In our gospel reading, Jesus, in a sense, reenacts Israel's struggles by fasting and praying for 40 days in the wilderness. And then in Rome, Paul draws the parallel between how the, the actions of Adam brought sin for all, while those of Jesus offer redemption to all. I've struggled over the years with the idea that because Adam sinned, all are sinful, as if long ago one guy knocked over a pitcher of water and we're all, we've all been stuck mopping up the mess ever since. But Paul's words in Romans remind us that we are connected and our actions and inactions affect not only ourselves but those around us. There's a saying attributed to the Irish of those who struggle with alcoholism, a man takes a drink, a drink takes a drink, a drink takes a man. Just as individual sinful acts harden over time into habits and addictions in our lives, the cumulative effect of the individual sins of all humanity has hardened over centuries and millennia into systems of violence and injustice. Sin is therefore both individual and societal. It is both a me thing and a we thing. But in the same way, as Christians, we believe that the life and ministry, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ bring a new beginning, not miraculously and in an instant putting us back in, in the Garden of Eden, but allowing God slowly to undo sin's damage in our individual lives, but also in society, and even allowing us a small part, allowing each of us a small part in that work of restoration. And so Lent reminds us that we are small parts of, the lar of this larger story, the great story of sin and restoration, 
and asks us to look at our lives, whether our words and actions are adding to the world's accumulation of pain and misery, or whether they lighten the load for ourselves and those around us. In, our, in, the, in the gospel, we look at Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. We may well wonder why he went there in the first place. In the sequence of Matthew's gospel, Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, as I said, comes immediately after his baptism by John the Baptist, when Jesus, as he was coming up out of the water, saw the Spirit come down like a dove and heard these words from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. In the wilderness, Jesus struggled with the question of what that meant and of how to respond to God's gracious words. As God's Son, the Beloved, what sort of life was he to live? What sort of ministry was he to accomplish? As he was pondering, as Jesus was pondering in the wilderness, we're told that Jesus was that we're told that Satan was right on was right there to offer false choices. Jesus' temptations may seem a bit exotic to us to turn stones into bread for himself, to throw himself off the top of the, of the Jerusalem temple so that God might catch him to gain world domination at the price of his soul. But each of these would have twisted and distorted Jesus' ministry into something destructive, to make his ministry about meeting his own needs, or about showmanship and flashy but ultimately meaningless displays of power, or as a cause of oppression, even with the best of intentions. And we we all know from history that, uh, as the saying goes, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. We know that some of the worst crimes of humanity were committed by people with good intentions. It's notable that in each case, Jesus was tempted to take something that was good, that was in itself good, food, faith, God's creation, and turn it into something harmful, something ugly. Jesus had a choice to, reject, to accept or reject the option Satan offered, and at each turn, Jesus rejected temptation. In each case, turning to Scripture as a defense against temptation. Lent reminds us that we also face choices, whether and how we observe Lent, and more broadly, how we live life. Um, each of us each of us, in our own way, face different versions of these temptations, whether to act in, self, in self-serving ways, uh, to uh, act out, our, to act out um, harmful or destructive actions under the heading of faith, uh, or, or, or to dominate those around us. So even though Jesus' temptations in, in their speci- specificity, as I said, seem exotic, uh, we, we all face different versions of these. Traditionally, Christians have given up something for Lent, chocolate or some other favorite food, perhaps. Giving up meat for Lent is a, is a classic Lenten observance. Such fasting may remind us of Jesus' 40-day fast in the wilderness and may strengthen our faith. However, if we turn giving, giving up something for Lent into, into a cause for feeling self-righteous, uh, we're, fe- we're defeating our purpose. There are many kinds of fasting. For example, my I, I, I go to my I go to my cardiologist every six months, and you know, right on right on cue, my you know, after he after he uh, gives me my EKG, uh, he uh, pu- pushes me toward intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting, pushing my consumption of food into a defined eight-hour per- period of time each day, and going without food the rest of the day as a means of losing weight. As if. <laughs> in the 58th chapter of Isaiah, the prophet criticizes the leaders and people for giving up food while holding on to destructive actions. The prophet gives examples of their sin, oppression of workers, and violence, and then tells them, Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. 
Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here am I. In a similar spirit, in words attributed to not St. Francis, but Pope Francis, Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so you can listen. We like to think that we live to ourselves and we die to ourselves, that our sins affect only ourselves and are no one else's concern. But in reality, as I said, we're all small parts of a large, much larger story that began long ago. We are, each of us in part, the product of choices made by those who came before us, and those who come after will live with the heritage left by our words and actions. In our reading from Romans, Paul's comparison of Adam and Jesus remind us that our lives affect others, that we can imitate Adam or Jesus in the effect of our actions on others. If we have learned anything from the pandemic, it may be that our actions indeed affect others, just as our choices to show up sick or stay home, to protect ourselves from the virus or not, either protected or exposed to the virus, those around us, all of our choices affect others as well. Our words, our actions can inspire love or incite hatred can elevate or degrade those around us. And like Jesus in the wilderness, when we are tempted, we can turn to the words of God in Scripture and turn to God in prayer, relying in our time of weakness on God's strength. Most of all, we can remember God's great love for us in sending Jesus. Amid humankind's long story of sin and by his death and resurrection, writing a new and hopeful ending. In our time of testing, may we look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was waiting endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Our, uh, please uh, rise as you're able and join me in praying in the word our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forth in this place to love and serve the Lord. Go forth in this place in peace to love and serve all to whom God calls us in service. Go forth as messengers of hope for the, for, for the gospel of the risen Christ. Go forth re, both remembering that we are dust and to dust we shall return and repenting and believing in the gospel. And as we go forth, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us and go with us each one now and evermore. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Our final hymn, number 141 in the red hymnals, number 141 in the red.
Lord, who throughout these forty days for us did fast and pray, teach us with thee to mourn our sins and close by thee to stay. As thou with Satan didst content and didst the victory win, O oh, give us strength in thee to fight, in thee to conquer sin. And through these days of penitence and through thy passion tide, yea, ever more in life and death, Jesus with us abide. Abide with us, that so this life of suffering overpass, an Easter of unending joy we may attain at last.